The purpose of my presentation is to introduce the topic nanoimprint lithography. I am going to divide this talk into eight parts. One, brief history. Two, what is nanoimprint lithography? Three, types of nanoimprint lithography. Four, comparison with other little techniques. Five, challenges in nanoimprint lithography. Six, applications. Seven, necessary development. Eight, conclusions. Let's go start. The imprint is an ancient technique used for the reproduction of seals and stamps and also writings and coins. We can see this small brick stamp of Mesopotamia, the ceramic movable type of China, and standard patterns and mold for making coins. The term nano imprint lithography, NIL, was coined in the scientific literature. In 1996, when Professor Stephen Chu and his students published a report in Science, although how the embossing now taken as a synonym of nail, of thermoplastic has been appearing in the patent literature for a few years already. Let's turn now to what is done in pre lithography. It's a method of fabricating nanometer scale patterns. It is a simple nanolithography process with low cost, high throughput, and high resolution. It creates patterns by mechanical deformation of imprint resist and subsequent processes. The imprint resist is typically a monomer or polymer formulation that is cured by heat or UV light during the imprinting. Now we can see the steps of the nanoimprint lithography process. Now we will move on to types of nanoimprint lithography. In terms of resist curing, there are two fundamental types of the process, thermal nil and ultraviolet or UV nil. Let's consider this in more detail. Now we will see a simplified process of thermal and UV nil. The thermal nil, also known as hot embossing process, is the earliest type of nil introduced by Professor Chu, which involves imprinting onto a thermally softened thermoplastic polymer resist. A typical thermal nil process is as follows. A is first heated up to an elevated temperature higher than the glass and tissue temperature. Temperature Tg of the thermoplastic polymer resist used. As the heated mold comes in contact with the resist, the resist will be heated up and softened into a molten stage where it will fill in the mold cavities under sufficient imprinting pressure and time. Now let's talk about the UV nil process which involves imprinting onto a layer of liquid photopolymer resist and curing using UV exposure, which causes resist hardening due to cross-linking in the polymer instead of manipulating the phase change via resist temperature. The remaining imprint mechanism, however, is similar to the thermal nail process. The UV nil process has several prominent advantages over the thermal nil process, which include the capability of UV nil to be conducted at room temperature without the need of elevated temporal imprinting, which helps eliminate the issues resulting from the thermal expansion variations between the mold, the substrates, and resist. In addition, the imprint process involves uh, a less viscous liquid photoresist, which allows the process to be conducted at a lower imprint pressure compared to the thermal nail processes. The lower viscosity of the resist also allows the resist to fill in the mold cavity in a shorter time, and the elimination of the temporal cycles also improves the process throughput. Now we will see a comparison of the two processes. 
There are other types of nail, simultaneous thermal uh, UV, laser assisted direct imprint, soft UV nail, electrical field assisted nail, and reverse nail. Let's look now at nail variants based on imprint contact. In terms of imprint contact types, nail processes can be categorized into three types, like to play nail, roll to play nail, and roll to roll nail. In play to play nail, a rigid flat stand mold, typically a pattern nail wafer, is used to imprint onto a resist layer on a flat rigid substrate, resulting in a area contact. In general, play-to-play -play nail may be conducted in two manners, single-step imprinting and multiple-step imprinting. In single-step imprinting, the entire imprint area, usually the entire wafer, is imprinted in a single imprinting cycle regardless of its size. However, this method is typically unsuitable for large imprinting areas, as it will require large forces to provide a suitable imprint pressure, which may reach 20 kN of force for an 8-inch wafer. Additionally, air bubble and trumpet issues are also commonly observed in play-to-play -play nails. In multiple step imprinting, we have the SSIL process and J fill process. In roll to play nail, a roller press mechanism is used to provide imprinting force onto a rigid surface, as shown previously. Since a roller press mechanism is utilized in roller based nail, the actual contact area during imprinting is only a line along the roller in contact with the substrate rather than the entire stamp area in play-to-play -play nail. This very much reduces the required imprinting force in the nail process, which may go as low as uh, 200 newton to achieve an imprinting pressure of approximately one bar for an imprinting width of 300 millimeters. Additionally, do it the line contact, the roller basin nail process has the advantage of reducing issues regarding trepid air bubbles, thickness variation, and dust pollutants, which also greatly improve its replication uniformity. As for the roll to roll nail process, an imprint roller with a pattern and surface or rapid with a flexible mold is used to imprint onto a, a flexible substrate on a supporting roller instead of a play suit of play play in roll to play in the processes. The entire process is based on the roll to roll manufacturing concept, which has the advantage of continuous process and high throughput, and hence provides a highly promising solution for industrial scale applications. Let's turn now to comparison with other light techniques. One of the most important things when we're talking about lithography, of course, is the resolution of lines and spaces. This table of international technology roadmap for semiconductors shows publicity resolution for the various patterning techniques. The black cells indicate where there are published paper indicating the use of the technique in production, the gray cells and the cross hatchet indicates where techniques have been demonstrated to be capable of smaller resolutions. Resolution down into the 10 or 15 nanometer range for lines and spaces is clearly demonstrated and further extension to smaller features are, are expected. An lithography is a potential solution for lines and spaces. Uh, Neil has to make substantial defective progress. Because of this, its first possible implementation is in relatively defect tolerant parts, such, for example, a flash memory. Moving on now to challenges in nanoprint lithography. 
we can see these general challenges for electrography, but we focus in the key challenges that have been addressed over the years include throughput, overlay, defectivity, and mass infrastructure. Throughput is primarily a function of resist filling, and a targeted of one second filling is critical to achieving a throughput of 20 wafers per hour for a for an hybrid model. Sub one second filling was demonstrated during 2013. Additionally, mix and match overlay of 8 nanometers have been achieved. The key challenges remaining for the technology are centered about defectivity and mass readiness. Improved resist properties and separation mechanics, along with particle control, have enabled defectivity to be reduced by several orders of magnitude over the last few years. The target for introduction of the technology into production is 1 per square centimeters for a lot of 25 wafers. Standard practice for imprinting bulbs, creating a master template and using it to create replica mass and replicas of the replica mass to do the actual imprinting. Imprinting lithography requires a max infrastructure that addresses both master imprint mass and replica mask. Zero defect mask uh, with dimension of 26 nanometers have been demonstrated and used to re fabricate replica mask. Current best defectivity on replica mask without repair are 3 square centimeters with a critical dimension uniformity of 1.5 nanometers. Advanced writing tools and processes will also be required to enable the fabrication of, of sub-20 nanometer imprint mask. We can see two types of defects occurring in nail molds, protrusion and hollow defects, which correspond to the opaque and clear defects in photomask. Let's look now at application in nanoimprint lithography. Nail applications can be as manifold as those of other lithographic patterning methods. The applications can be divided in the two main categories, pattern transfer applications and polymer devices. In the first category, pattern transfer applications, the nanoimprinted resist structure is used as a temporary masking layer for a subsequent pattern transfer at the steel. And in the second category, polymer devices, the imprinted patterns add functionality to the polymer doctrine, which is the end product. We have some examples like pattern magnetic media for hard disk drives, sub wavelength metal strip ratings high brightness like emitting diodes, polymer optics, and bioapplications too. Now we will move on to necessary development. We are already talking about challenges, but we need to see some aspects in more detail. We can see this table of international technology roadmap for semiconductors about imprinting template requirements. In red are manufacturable solutions not known. For the next years, we need to work for improve some aspects of the critical dimension uniformity, also to defect size impact critical dimension, and corner radius top of the feature, which is critical to a sphere, and near surface defect which is the maximum defect size of the quartz substrate from the surface level to a deep of 200 nanometers. Let's look now at conclusions. In research, as long as the machines are affordable and reliable enough that they can replace or complement standard lithographic techniques, Many research institutes and universities now have access to silicon process technology, which often comprises tools such as resist process technology, pattern gener generator, mass aligners, and etching and deposition facilities in a clean room environment. In industry, success will also depend on whether they fit into the process chain already 
established in a silicon clean room environment. Nanoprelatography pre-lithography has now passed a barrier from the laboratory scale to industrial production. Although it seems that room temperature processes based on UV exposure have an advantage over processes based on thermocycles. That's all. Thanks for watching.